Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Ingram, and this is The Ingram Angle. Thanks for being with us on a Friday night. We examine Jill and Giselle's cruel power moves now. Last year, on October 14th, here's how we opened the show. If you're thinking, let's say, of putting an addition on your house, maybe renovating your kitchen, would you trust John Fetterman to review the bids and negotiate with the builders? And for that matter, would you trust Joe Biden to hire the best team to get the job done? Now, if the answer to those questions is no, and I imagine it is for most of you, then neither man is really capable of serving as a U.S. senator or the U.S. president, at least not without a lot of people making decisions for him. And of course, this is exactly what's happening in both cases. Now, here we are, four months later, sadly vindicated. Wondering how two women closest to sick men in declining health can even live with themselves. Both Jill Biden and Giselle Fetterman know better than anyone how unfit to serve their husbands are. Now, as bad as both men have looked and sounded at various times to the rest of us, imagine how bad they are behind closed doors. But, of course, these women lie to themselves, and then they lie to us. How will this episode affect the campaign and his upcoming schedule? And as soon as he's back, he'll be back on the trail. I don't think it's going to affect it. The president's campaign this week released an ad just uh, really attacking your husband's cognitive abilities. It's ridiculous. I mean, Joe's on the phone every single minute of the, of the day. But I guess the allure of power is too great for compassion and common sense in these cases. Because these women are pushing their men beyond their limits, not out of a devotion to their constituents, but due to these women's own desire for political power and prestige. Hey, everybody. It's John and Giselle. As you can see, we hit a little bump on the campaign trail. Um, yeah. It was on Friday. Uh, I just wasn't feeling very well. So I decided, you know what, I need to get checked out. So I, I went to the hospital. I need to get checked out. Because yeah. I was right, as always. Well, one week after spending three days in the hospital for a separate health issue, the Pennsylvania senator had again checked himself into Walter Reed. Now, while a lot of details aren't there yet, the media quickly moved to minimize the medical developments themselves. This from Rolling Stone. John Fetterman joins John McCain, Donald Trump, Patrick Leahy, and countless other politicians who have sought treatment at a hospital. Okay, is that what's going on, just treatment at a hospital? Then there was the effort to frame this as some brave and vulnerable act, not anything that would be considered craven or a cruel political calculation by a stage wife and political nihilist. And at the White House briefing today, our favorite binder reader, she chimed in. It was kind of a preemptive defense against criticism of all those, including Biden himself, who vouch for this poor man's capabilities. Millions of Americans, uh, as you all know, go untreated with depression every day. Senator Fem Fetterman did the right thing and brave thing today, today or just this week, uh, by getting the help that he uh, definitely needs. As the president and first lady shared this morning, they are thinking about John, Giselle, and their entire uh, Fetterman family today. And uh, they, they are grateful to uh, Senator Fetter Fetterman for uh, being an example uh, to this. Well, so many on the left refused to acknowledge Fetterman's compromised health six months ago. And despite the latest news, they're still holding the line. At least there are a few reporters, though, who are out there and are actually doing their jobs. NBC's Dasha Burns was heavily criticized by her fellow journos for accurately describing Fetterman's situation after she conducted an interview with him during the campaign. And today, she reported new details about Fetterman's health. I did speak to a close senior aide of his. He said that we're looking at most likely weeks mm -hmm. that Senator Fetterman will be in inpatient care. Both. Uh, the staff and Fetterman himself were surprised uh, by the severity of the depression. For those around him, that it's been sort of difficult to distinguish the symptoms of the stroke from symptoms of uh, depression, mm, saying mm -hmm. that sometimes, you know, it's hard to know if, if he's not hearing you or if he's just sort of being crippled by right. depression and social anxiety. 
Now, rather than doing a reality check on their previous defense of Fetterman's capabilities, his office keeps digging. His office is so confident that Fetterman will make that full recovery that they say the prospect of resignation was, quote, never discussed and is not on the table. Well, how, how do they know for sure? How can they say that so confidently? The poor man, he's suffering. But don't worry. We're all confident, they say. A full recovery is coming. Wait, that does sound familiar, though. John Fetterman, he's still in the hospital. He is recovering. He's expected to make a full recovery. Mr. Fetterman can make a full recovery. Some strokes take longer to recover from than others, and I'm really pleased that John Fetterman's doctors uh, say his prognosis is, you know, a, a full recovery. Now, this was wishful thinking at best and an outright lie at worst. And today, the honest few around him obviously see that he's been visibly struggling since he arrived in Washington. Let's face it, Fetterman has been through so much, and a layman can tell that he needs to be in full-time stroke rehab and recovery, not in the pressure cooker that is Washington, D.C. But rather than seeing his recent diagnosis as a wake-up call, Giselle Fetterman is trying to use his diagnosis as a political asset. After what he's been through in the past year, there's probably no one who wanted to talk about his own health less than John. I'm so proud of him for asking for help and getting the care he needs. Well, oh, of course, we're all happy he's getting the care he needs. He should be getting help full time. It's not a reason for shame. A clinical depression is serious. And in and of itself, it's a serious condition, but especially coming after a stroke. And heart issues, which you may remember, they'd hidden from the public. Now, by the way, Giselle was the same woman who called the NBC reporter, Dasha Burns, openly ableist for questioning her husband's physical and mental condition during the campaign. So Giselle owes Ms. Burns, who was right, an apology. When people say politics is a cruel business, they're usually referring to the politicians both battling each other and the parties that they're in, Republican versus Democrat, liberal versus conservative. But in the case of Fetterman and Biden, the cruelty comes at the hands of family members who deny and lie in order to ride the coattails of the men they prop up for power and status. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.